All right, um, let's get started. Um, first of all, thank you again for your time today to join this short webinar. I would like to introduce myself first. My name is Dietrich. Um, I am the global product manager for our nucleic extraction chemistries and instruments. And it's my pleasure today to um, show you a couple of slides. The um, show um, is taking about 30 minutes today. Um, and uh, please, um, I will show you my contact data at the end of the of the of the discussion and the presentation. But nevertheless, you can also use the chat function, and I will come back to you um, after after the webinar. Then, um, so thank you again for joining today. Um, I hope you enjoy the presentation a little bit, and uh, and um, yeah. Uh, so thanks for being here. So um, the topic of today is high volume DNA extractions of human samples. And uh, if we are talking about that, this is a typical topic for biobanks, for medical centers, and also for other hospitals, um, genetic scientists, and so on and so on. Because these guys, and you have maybe also experiences with that, are extracting DNA of, for example, five milliliters of frozen or flesh, fresh blood, or using other human sample materials like uh, saliva, like uh, tissue or like hair or whatever. So please, um, that is what we're talking today. We are talking really about the Flexstar, which is an instrument to do this automatically. Um, and also we're talking a little bit about the chemistry um, of uh, which is um, using this kind of system. The first slide is, but the first slide, and I would like to start with, um, with what's the current situation. So who is LGC and who is Autogen? So we are the exclusive EMEA, so Europe, Middle East, and Africa distributor for Autogen's products. So um, LGC is one of the leading providers of nucleic acid extraction and SNP genotyping equipment and chemistries. We are really well known in the um, egg bio world. So all the plant breeders and livestock breeders are knowing us pretty well because they are using our nucleic acid extraction kits and SNP genotyping chemistry already. But we have also Service Lab, which is uh, based in Hoddesdon, which is in, in the suburban area of London. And we are Europe's biggest genotyping and DNA extraction service laboratory as well. Um, LGC is a quite old company. We were found already in 1844 as the lab lab laboratory of the government chemist. Um, so we have a headquarter, which is also in the suburban area of, of London in Teddington in the UK. And, uh, we have been a governmental lab till 1996 before we have been privatized by um, the prime minister at this time. And nowadays we are about 2000 global employees. We have also just acquired a new company called um, BioResearch um, and um, LGC um, has a headquarter not only in, um, in Teddington, but also a service lab in Hoddesdon and labs in Brazil and Boston. So we are really a global company and a global player. Autogen is the company who, was, who uh, is uh, producing this kind of um, instruments we are presenting today. So Autogen is a leading provider of nugget exit extraction equipment. Um, they are based in um, Holliston, which is um, in the neighborhood of Boston. Um, and um, they are really well established in this kind of high volume DNA extraction um, instrumentation and chemistry. Um, and um, what is really the key for their for their offers is that they are offering and provide the most practical, economically effective solutions for your sample prep needs, and um, they are really supporting and uh, and uh, offering a huge uh, range of services here. And uh, so again, Autogen is really the producer. Um, so if you are um, looking for our for this instrument, you will see that Autogen label. So we, but LGC is the exclusive European distributor for these kind of products. If you're talking about high volume DNA extractions using a robotic platform, there are two components in general. First of all, the, uh, the flexigen chemistry. So the chemistry, which is doing the job and then the instrument. And I would like to start in this first part with the flexigen, flexigen chemistry. So you might be aware that there are other systems available on the market and our competition is normally using a magnetic bead based extraction chemistry. The flexigen chemistry, which is being used here for, uh, for our products is a precipitation based chemistry. 
Um, and that is a difference in offering you several benefits, which I would like to explain in this first part of the presentation. Um, so first of all, I would like to start with a short workflow overview. So in general, there are four main steps using this kind of precipitation-based chemistry. First of all, you're collecting and washing the nuclei first, then you're lysing and, uh, and digest this nuclei. You're precipitating and washing the DNA, which is then free floating. And finally, you're simply dissolving the DNA. So four main steps. Um, you can use this also manually, but um, in the end, um, it can be done um, using a robot as well. So four steps, collect, wash nuclei, lyse and digest the nuclei, precipitate and wash the DNA, and then dissolve the DNA. That's in the end all. And I would like to go uh, through this kind of protocol step by step. So again, the first step is to collect and wash the nuclei. So here you can see on the left side, a five milliliter of um, sample of fresh blood. You're simply adding um, a lysis buffer, which is only digestion and um, destroying the red blood cells. Um, the white nuclei cells are still intact. And then you simply spin them down. So you're spinning down this white uh, nuclei or this white blood cells um, and collect them in this first step. And in the second step, then you're simply washing them because sometimes um, they are, you just have to get rid of a couple of other contaminations which are still sticking on the surface of this nuclei or maybe also at the um, reaction vial. So first step, collecting and washing these kind of nuclei. And then you have an enriched nuclei um, yeah, um, rich nuclei um, sample. Uh, and what you're doing then is, because the DNA is this in this nuclei, you are simply digesting, uh, digest these kind of nuclei using protease and a special uh, buffer to lyse this kind of nuclei. You have to incubate um, at 65 degrees for 10 minutes. Um, and then you can see already that the DNA is free floating in your lysate. Uh, and this lysate is then transfer, uh, transferred first, first into a new a new reaction vial, which you can see here by this arrow. So you're transferring this kind of uh, digest uh, into this recovery tubes, um, and you will show uh, I will show this later to you um, how this looks like when we have a closer look on the robot. So all this kind of removal of the liquids is done by decantation. You might know that um, magnetic bead-based systems are often connected with a liquid handling robot. Here, we don't have a liquid handling robot um, involved. We are simply decantating our samples, um, and that's all. So, um, so no li liquid handling involved here. The third step is then the precipitation. I've shown you that the DNA is free floating here, and then you're simply adding a precipitation solution um, and spinning down the DNA pellet. That's all. And finally, you simply add a washing solution. Um, and again, you simply clean up your DNA, which is then um, highly purified. And in the final end, you simply have a DNA pellet, which must be dissolved again in some kind of buffer so that you have um, a ready-to-go DNA um, preparation here. So very simple, these four steps, um, very easy. The total time for about 30 samples, that's the maximum capacity per run, is uh, three hours. Um, the average DNA yields is between 100 and 210 microgram per five milliliter sample. So if you're starting with a 5 ml blood sample, you have between 100 to 210 microgram. Um, what is important to, to say here, all these kind of values which I'm showing to you are quite flexible because um, you can program uh, faster protocols. So sometimes you can um, have a look for um, a two hour protocol, for example. But then you should always keep in mind that the DNA quality of these kind of um, extractions might be um, affected by this um, by reducing the incubation times, for example. So be careful here. But an average time is three hours for 30 samples, and also DNA yields depending on the blood sample, on the sampling process. Sometimes, if you have um, any cancer therapies, um, sometimes these kind of cancer therapies are influencing the DNA, the final DNA yields. So, um, but for average reasons, we are saying between 1 and 210 microgram. Um, and the typical average in terms of um, quantification using UV measurement is between 1.8 and 1.9, which is quite quite good, I think. So these are the really most important things. Um, and then the, the question is there for sure, 
what kind of sample types can I use using this kind of flexigen chemistry and the Flexstar robot, and what kind of applications can I do with the extracted DNA. And you can see that you can do in the end all kind of human sample types um, in combination with all kind of downstream applications. So you can use this kind of flexigen chemistry for whole blood samples, for fresh and frozen materials, but also for processed blood samples, for example, buffy coats and packed cells, or completely other human samples like saliva, like origin samples, uh, tissues are, are possible, bone marrow, and even also buccal swabs. Um, and on the other side, um, you can use the extracted DNA uh, for all kinds of dance applications, including Sanger sequencing, including next generation sequencing, which normally requires very high molecular DNA in combination with the uh, high quality. So the, the purification grade must be very high, but that's not a problem for our flexigen chemistry. Yeah. You can do also other things than sequencing. So you can use it for different kind of um, different kind of genotyping technologies. You might be aware of our CASP genotyping, which we are offering um, for also for human applications. Uh, we have a broad range of genotyping assays here available already on our homepage. So please have a look there. Uh, but you can also go for TechMan, um, for example, for TechMan applications and genotyping um, and also other PCR based technologies as well as ship technologies like um, FM matrix, for example. So you can see the, there are no limitations in terms of the sample types and also no limitations in terms of the applications. What's important, especially for example, for next generation sequencing is that we are providing um, high molecular weights. Um, here is a, is a gel, electro, um, electrophoresis gel picture. And you can see that, um, that you can see this line here at about 50 KB. So um, the flexigen chemistry is really a, um, allowing the extraction of um, high molecular weights. You can go up to 150 KB. Um, you might have to adapt the, the lysis conditions here and you have to avoid uh, shearing forces. Uh, but um, so that's possible if you are playing around with these kind of uh, lysis conditions. So you can, but you can see here that uh, the DNA is normally very high molecular and um, that's the reason. Like you can use it for all kind of downstream applications, including next generation sequencing. Next story, especially for biobanks. So if you have, if you're working maybe in a biobank, is stability. So because these uh, kind of um, yeah institutes are looking not only for extracted DNA now, but they're also looking for uh, DNA which can be used also in ten years if it is stored under certain conditions, and that's what we have tested. So we ha had a couple of uh, of blood samples here and simply have um, frozen them and um, thawed them every year again and again and had a look for the stability. And you can see here that there is no change in the total yield. So um, the stability is really guaranteed here even after 10 years. And what you can see here is also that there are no differences in terms of system temperature, meaning uh, if you store the DNA in the fridge, it is also stable as well as if you're storing it in the in the minus 20 degree fridge. So um, again, this is, I think, uh, a great thing, um, no degradation even after 10 years here, as long as you're storing your DNA under certain temperature conditions. So that's important for biobanks, but also for everybody else. Um, for example, if you have samples um, of people who are not alive anymore um, and you, which you can't resample again, so that's, um, that's important. <clears throat> so this is already the first part of my presentation. Again, I would like to summarize the benefits of the flexigen chemistry. First of all, I've shown you that the flexigen chemistry is able to extract high quality and high molecular weight DNA, which is also compatible with all kind of down applications, which you know um, and which you might use in your laboratory. Um, I've shown you also that the purified DNA is stable for long term storage. Um, the good thing is that we have no magnetic beads in the DNA aleut, so often you have a cross-contamination with magnetic beads in your final DNA preparation because you can't get rid of the magnetic beads. So as we are not using any magnetic beads here, we don't have any cross-contamination and no transfer with these kind of magnetic beads, which is quite a good benefit and which is guaranteeing you this kind of stability which I've shown you in terms of uh, long but also short-term storage. Um, as we're using a precipitation-based chemistry, we are enriching the white cell nuclei. 
um, that means that we are extracting only DNA and that means also and another benefit that we are eliminating the RNA and other contaminations. Uh, so you don't need any RNA digestion with using this kind of flexigen chemistry. Um, and also as we're using a protease to digest the, the, the uh, white cell nuclei, uh, we are also getting rid and eliminating all protein other contaminations like for example ribosomes. So you don't need any special treatments with RNAs or proteases. Okay, this is the first star, uh, the first part of my of my talk, and I have shown you now the chemistry. But now we're coming to the machine, and that is how it's looking like. Uh, I would like to start with a short overview about the technical features. So first of all, we have um, the waste here um, in the left corner. Uh, we have a temperature controller, the main breaker, which is here. There is a heater on board, for example, for the protease digestion. We have a power switch um, and here um, is an operational touch panel here. So um, there are no buttons or something. We have a touch screen here. There's also a barcode reader and I will come back to this um, later during my talk in the sample tracking, um, in the sample tracking discussion. Um, and then we have for sure here the reagents, bottle tray um, and so on. So I think that's um, what you can see already is that it is not a complex machine. It is a very easy machine and also the training and the programming is very convenient. You don't have a lot of technical features which make the instrument more complex. It's very easy um, and uh, so even people who have no experiences with, with liquid handling um, or DNA extraction in general using a robot are getting familiar with this machine very, very soon. And uh, so normally after one or two days, you're already an expert using this machine. Having a closer look to the to the main heart of the robot, which is the, the, yeah, the area where the extraction is taking place, you can see a couple of other components. Uh, first of all, we have this kind of rack table, which is moving or which can move from the um, right to the left. Um, we have here the dispenser. And also the decantation stage. Again, we are not uh, removing liquids by uh, liquid handling. We are decantating our our samples. Um, and also we have an agitator and a gripper. So an agitator which is really um, transporting and shaking um, the the kind of racks um, and the tube racks, and a gripper which is transporting these kind of racks, which you can see on the right, this blue um, tube racks here. Uh, to the centrifuge which is here which you can't see on this picture which is below this kind of uh, rack table here so this gripper is transporting these kind of tube racks into the centrifuge where then for example the nuclei are spin down um, in the centrifuge what you can see also is are two kind of tube racks one for the sample so here you can extract um, five five samples here in one rack and you have six positions and therefore you have a capacity of 30 samples per run. And here is a sample input. And if, as I have shown you um, in the protocol, there is a transfer from the sample input to the DNA tube racks. And therefore you will find your final DNA preparations here in this DNA tube rack in the back, in this blue one here. So you simply uh, load this kind of sample inputs with your blood sample, for example, and finally, you simply take out this kind of DNA tube rack here uh, because you will find your DNA preparations here in this blue one. So very easy. Um, here is again the heater, which is uh, heating up the samples. The gripper, I have said already a couple of words, the agitator is shaking the samples. Um, and yeah, and here's the dispenser. So very easy robot. And uh, yeah. A couple of words in terms of the throughputs. I've said already that you can extract 30 samples per batch. Um, that means as you are needing about three hours uh, per sample run that you can do approximately 90 samples per day and an additional run overnight. So you can uh, store this kind of DNA for a couple of uh, hours um, so that you simply go home and the robot uh, has uh, fresh uh, DNA operations um, right in the morning the next day. Uh, normally the maximum capacity is 5 ml so uh, we are also not recommending to overload um, your your sample racks the reason is 
you are increasing the risk for cross contaminations, meaning five milliliters is really the absolute maximum capacity in terms of blood extractions um, and also saliva extractions. For buffy coats, it's the same because normally you have to dilute your, your buffy coat samples um, to a certain degree. So, um, so please don't overload uh, or please don't load more than five milliliters of blood into your uh, sample racks. So if you have a 10 mil blood sample, please split it up um, to maybe two, five milliliters um, of blood. So that is important. And then for sure you have also a reduced sample throughput. So 90 samples per day is important. An overnight run is also possible. Um, and one run takes about um, three hours for 30 samples. Um, because uh, you can leave the instrument alone in the night, uh, you have an untended hands-off operation, meaning you don't have to stay at the instrument the whole time as you are not able, uh, as you're not in the risk that you have blocked tips or any under pressure, which is maybe ruining your, your robotic head. You can simply go, go away and do something else. Um, there is an internal barcode scanning um, um, yeah, part um, component in the back, which is guaranteeing you the sample tracking integrity a touch panel, uh, the built-in centrifuge, and uh, which I've also shown you, um, you can you can simply go home. So or there's an in, onboard incubation and drying step. Uh, and what's important for your safety, um, there are also filters um, here on the machine. In terms of um, space and the footprint of the machine, because often these kind of liquid handling robots, which you might be aware, are often quite big or need, need extra space in your lab. Um, this machine is not really heavy and also the dimensions are very small. So uh, weight is about 275 kilograms, dimensions um, 70 centimeters weight, 76 centimeters in depth and about one meter 50 uh, in height, meaning that it is really a very small unit, uh, which is normally finding, um, is finding space in every kind of lab because um, there's always a corner which um, which is still free, and you can simply put this machine into this corner. So you don't uh, you don't require any special space or any special labs or any special power requirements. Sim you can simply uh, switch it on, and that's it. Um, it is CE approved, and for sure you can integrate the Flexstar into your um, limb system in your laboratory. So again not a complex robot, very easy to handle, and also the requirements are really, really normal and no special requirements are necessary for this robot. What is important as we are talking about decantation and as we are talking here um, about um, vials which are not sealed during the extraction process, what's about cross-contaminations between the vials? And therefore we made uh, extensive uh, studies over here and here can show, I can show you the results. Um, so again, it is important that you're starting with a maximum volume of five milliliters of blood. But if you're if you're doing this, you can see that there are no cross contaminations between blood samples marked with a plus and 20 negative uh, control samples, um, so plasmid samples here with a minus. And you can see that you can't find a PCR uh, fragment um, in, the, in the in the negative controls, meaning there is no real cross contamination here and the blood samples are still in their reaction wilds um, and are not spreading around in, in the negative plasmid samples. So no cross contaminations if you take care that you're not overloading your sample racks, which is quite important. Okay, and then finally, um, two slides in terms of the sample tracking process. Again, we have an internal barcode scanner, which is allowing a complete sample tracking integrity of the sample so you always know where the sample is we you are always sure that it is at the correct place um, nothing can get lost and what's also important is that this internal barcode scanner uh, is not only taking care for um, everything which is happening during the run but also is taking care for um, for the so-called restart function meaning if you have a breakdown of electricity in your lab then um, the robot is not stopping and starting again from the beginning. The robot is always starting at the point again where it has stopped. So for example, if um, doing the protocol after the lysis step of the nuclei, you have a breakdown of electricity, 
um, and then the robot would start again exactly at the at the time point of the extraction where it has stopped and that is i think a big big benefit because you're not able to lose any samples anymore um, for other robotic systems you simply uh, are, are losing the, the samples during the run here the, the robot is just doing its job as a um, um, although you had this breakdown and I think that's a big, big benefit. So no, you are not able to lose any samples anymore. And for sure you can get a, get a report. Finally, you can feed the robot with the patient IDs, with um, operator functions. You can go um, for the location of the sample and the DNA on processing recs during the run. You can record the starting and finishing time and the date of the run. You can give um, the protocol a name the number of samples and the lot numbers of the regions. Uh, you are reckoning all the errors and, um, and the conditions during the run, and you are creating reports to display all the information. And for sure, you can integrate the robot into your, in your limb system. Um, and I think and export the data and import the data as well. So there are really a lot of different kind of functions in terms of sample tracking um, as well. Um, and this is really making this kind of, um, yeah, this machine some kind of, complete little helper for your lab. So, so half an hour is gone. Um, I would like to summarize um, what I've shown you. Um, again, the the package um, contains two different kind of things, the Flex C-Gen Chemistry and the Flexstar Robot. And the key benefits, what I want to show you today, are that we can really um, extract high quality DNA preparations using the traditional precipitation-based chemistry. Um, <clears throat> I've shown you that the hardware is really reliable uh, and that even if mistakes are happening, that these mistakes are not influencing the final extraction because we have this restart function, which is rescuing the sample in the end. Um, so the maximum capacity is about 30 samples, which can be extracted in three hours. I've shown you that this small uh, footprint is really beneficial for packs uh, for laboratories which are already packed, um, and uh, so you don't need a lot of space for that. Uh, the recovery and restart function is really a big, big benefit because you're not losing any samples anymore. There's a sample tracking software included. Um, you can use a DNA uh, afterwards without any post-treatment, for example, RNA suggestion or whatever. Um, so the RNA is degraded already and, um, and is not in the final DNA preparation anymore. Uh, and for sure, we are also offering great support and service. So that is the last slide. Um, I hope that the presentation was quite clear for you. Um, nevertheless, if you have any questions, you can use still the chat function. And I will come back to you as well as uh, here my contact data. Um, so um, I'm based in Berlin. Um, so that's the reason why I have my German accent here, but uh, nevertheless, uh, please feel free to contact me uh, via email. Um, and um, if you have any questions, then yeah, I am happy to answer them also in the next days or weeks. So I hope that this was some kind of informative uh, webinar for you. Um, and I'm looking forward to hear from you soon. Um, and with this, thank you very much for your attention. Uh, have a nice and lovely day. Um, and um, talk to you soon. Thank you and bye-bye.